Hey, Dot. Good to see you. How are you doing? Beautiful day here. Nice and cool, not too hot. So today I was thinking of doing my um, July folder, the back cover. And <laughs> uh, I started looking at fairies again and I got hooked in <laughs> doing a bunch more of my pressed fairies. So I'll show you that in the last cover. Uh, the back cover, I'm going to be doing something like this. And this is um, a royal royalty-free print of, um, I can't think of his name now, and I forgot to get it. Um, but he was in the 1800s, I think 1830 when he, was, when, when he was born. And he did a bunch of these fairy paintings. And I really like this one because of the... Um, the way he painted it being very see-through looking. So I thought I could try that on the back cover. Going to be hot tomorrow and hi. You're good, but yep, good. Well, better than snow dot. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Have you got air conditioning or... You probably don't need a whole lot of air conditioning in the UK. This is probably usually a little bit on the cooler side there. Hi, Dale. Gina, good to see you. Richard Dad? Is that who it is? I don't think so. It says J A Fit on the bottom here might be a Fitzgerald or Fitzpatrick or something um hey Candy hey Janet Karen yeah I got it on um one of the um free domain sites that you can get paintings and stuff. Hey Nancy. And I really liked it. I thought it was really awesome. Very simple. So that's what I'm gonna be drawing today. And I think I'm gonna use some black gesso, maybe even some um pan pastels to do the see-through look. So hope everybody's doing well. Thursday already. This week's just fly by. My company just left. And my son's here too now. <laughs> Jeez, so much for COVID. Fitzgerald, that's it. Yes, and he, all his work is um, royalty free. So, great place to get reference and stuff. This will be interesting to watch. I'm not sure where I would start to do the transparent part. You will learn. Paint along. It's not that hard. You could actually use some stencils in this for the background if you wanted to do, if you have a small enough um, stencil. But I think I'm just going to use a bunch of um, sponge for that. We could do it on a piece of paper that already has a background. And I just went through my box of papers and found this and this would be awesome because it's already that type of mood and it does have some landscape pictures in here so we could use this
I love this paper. I haven't used any of it yet. I think I have two packs of it. I loved it so much. So you could use something. I like this type of moody kind of grungy look paper, but I want something. Um, well, that's mermaids. You could do that type of thing, maybe in the purples. Or we can just do our own. Well, this has some really neat papers. So I'll probably use this on something else. That would be cool too. You could put it on that. Yeah. I think we'll try the And the, and the reason why I got back onto the fairy stuff, I love fairies. I don't like the, I'm, the cutesy fairies are, are nice too, but I prefer more <laughs> crazy looking, a little on the creepy side fairies. <laughs> but I did get this book out. I saw this again. I love this book too. And this has some really neat fairy stuff in it. And it's mostly watercolor. These are cute. I like these guys. They're a little creepy, but they're cute. <laughs> I just like seeing how they um, added the little special touches, like the little scissors and the look at his toes coming out of the shoe here. Frog to die, Lean. <laughs> yeah, I should. This is cute. I really like. I, really, I like him. I like how they use the leaves to make the actual clothing. That's cute. Different types of creatures. <laughs> Colleen's chicken, but on the creepy side of fairyland. <laughs> And the grasshopper, he's cute. Hey, Eileen. <laughs> you like the pixies? Oh, you like that, Gail? Yeah. Did you guys see the movie? The movie is really cute. This is a really neat book. It gives you inspiration. He's got quite a few books out. So, and each one has got different characters in it. <laughs> There's the moss on top of his head. Yeah, they're neat. So that's where I got my inspiration. And from this book, too. This one. You've seen this one. Uh, this is the one that um, Xandra has, too. Because <laughs> it's inspiring, Janet. That's why. <laughs> this is a beautiful book. But this is more, more on the realism side of... of things and there is a bit of nudity so but I do love the uh, work that this guy does and he's got all the little creatures in the background too so this is where I got most of my inspiration from so um, last I think it was last week I showed you this this is what we did in the um, Blooming Artists um, class last Friday. 
Um, I did another one. Don't remember what book I put it in. Oh, I think it was a big book. Uh, let's see. I think it was in here. So I did another one to show them how to do it. And I loved their finished product. It turned out so neat. Um, I think it was this one. Yeah, this one. So it's a little bit different. And I put a little bonsai tree. Um, and we added more shading and shadowing and uh, highlights. Smashed mermaids, <laughs> sardined <laughs> mermaids. How about that? I'll try it, Eileen. <laughs> I'll give it a go. With the funny elves. This one. Is that the one, CB, you were thinking of? There's a couple. There's quite a few of different ones. There's this one also. This tells you all about them. <laughs> got all the pictures of them in that. That's the spider wick. Sprites. Um, see, I think I've popped my chat out. I don't know why, but I seem to have problems with my chat all the time. There you go, CB. Eileen found it. Yeah, so we're going to do some more fairies. So I'll show you what I've done so far in this, because that's what I did last month was the fairies, the smashed fairies. So I didn't put them in here. They're in this book. So that's what those were. We did this last couple weeks ago. So it's the reverse, the front side and the back side of the fairy. And it was put on the um, eco printed papers. You're losing your touch, Eileen. <laughs> So this is what I did so far. <laughs> so I put in, I made another fairy. This time it's trying to sneak out from behind the eco printed. And I have the printed these um, dragonfly wings on acetate from the printer and stuck them on. And he's number one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did the uh, this is eco print this was the water or the um, acrylic paint this was one that didn't uh, have a lot of detail so what I've done is I used a lot of um, shading to bring it out a little bit more and then I just painted these leaves lining around so it combines the whole two and then I, I also put a, <laughs> a piece of washi tape so it looks like he's being washi taped down 
So I just curved the washi tape and shaded the areas to make it look like it's 3D. And then this one, hot, and then there's my other one, and he was stapled in, <laughs> but he still managed to get out, and he's number two, and that's his butt, <laughs> but pro protruding through my paper. And then I just uh, used uh, one of the eco prints, and I just lightly drew in some of the areas just to um enhance it a little bit there's no added color but just a bit of pen work and then i just did my thoughts in there and this um yeah july was july so now we're going to do the back paper so we're going to put this paint this on it so i'm not sure if i want to do a side one i could do a side one i guess or just make a tall one. We don't need all of this. The queen of nothing. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that cute? Uh, <laughs> Janet, the washi tape holding them down. Now you had to find washi tape that didn't have a definite pattern, so you were able to cut it. But... And I like the staples, too. <laughs> the guy, poor guy, was stapled in. Little dirty feet. So, I think the best thing to do here will be do the light areas. So, it would be this area and this area. And then put um, black gesso on um, these two areas and down here. Maybe some brown or cream in here. We can paint a little bit of the fairies in. So I think I'll just um, do a quick little sketch. Uh, maybe I'll have it about there instead. I like her. She could go right in here probably. Yeah, about like that. So I'll just have a little few more trees or I could have this done in Celtic design too. And on the bottom maybe. That might look kind of cool. Janet, any new ones that came in? Hey, Kathy. All right, so we'll get a um, piece of paper to protect it. We'll just use this. And I think I'll just um, sketch in a little bit. Let's see. How far does she come down? There. I think I'm going to put the... So it'll be trees in here, and then right in here is when it's lighter. And it's a little bit lighter down here. So we can blend these in to here. So that's pretty well all I need. So this is kind of a greenish um, blue 
mix. It's not really um, smooth looking. So I got a little paint palette here. This is just dried paint on it. So I'm going to need a nice green. So probably let's use the lemon grass green here. And this is just craft paint that I'll use. And some nice sky blue maybe. This blue would be nice. Or sky blue. That's pretty. And I like using craft paint when you're doing journaling because then your pages don't stick together. What else? We will need kind of um, looks like um, maybe a buff with a bit of raw sienna. This color. I want cayenne here, that'll do. So this one here is corn silk yellow. It's always a good color to use. And this is cayenne. And I have a little bit of buttercream, maybe, or let's see. I think I have some buff somewhere. This is a good one. Uh, Amsterdam. Warm gray. All right. So I'm not going to worry about the trees. I just want to get a background color in right now. So we can use a fairly big brush would be nice. Let's see. What have I got in here? A paper towel. Don't want it too wet. So we want some of this blue in here. So just stroke a little bit of that in there. And then a little bit of the green, mix it around. A little bit of the yellow, lighten it. So you don't want it too um, smooth looking. Maybe a little bit of buff up here because it looks like it's the sky's grayed up a little bit there. And you bring it down into here a little bit just for the way the trees and the berries are. They are a little bit lighter in here. And then over here, this part, I want a little bit more of the yellow and the cayenne color. So it's pretty, pretty yellow down here. And 
a little bit of that gray. I have to go over it twice. It's not covering that up. We'll see. Um, and then a little bit of a cayenne in the top parts. I'm not too worried about having it look smooth. And then down here, more of this color. Wipe my, I don't want too much water, so I'm just going to wipe it off. Add a little bit more of the white or yellow, sorry. And it is kind of a glowing look to it, so I'm just going to bring my strokes up a little bit. Hey, Joan. Right, then I need some black. We have green black actually would look nice with it. It's not quite black, but it doesn't give that dull look. Put that in. So as you can see in here, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of a green black. It's not really black black. So I'm going to take a sponge and I'm going to sponge parts in here. So I have some um, sea sponge. So just wet it, soften it up. The sea sponge are nice because you can rotate the sponge and get different prints out of it. And you want to kind of pounce it off a bit. Okay, so we're really dense up here. down here. Along the down here. Here. And I'm going to take a little bit of this 
gray again. And just mute it a bit in this area. And in here, just a bit. So I got some different tones. Now, you can take a fan brush or one of these cheap old dollar store bristle brushes. See how raggedy that is? This makes great leaves and backgrounds for trees and stuff because it's all so uneven. But you can do that same with, the, with one of these. If you want to rough it up, it's even better. So I tend to use these. So it's a little more, if you see this here, it's a little more green. The leaves you can see. A little bit more highlights on them in here. So you want to mix a little bit of that black green again with that grayish color and just every once in a while dab a little bit of green of the light green in it. And then you just ever so lightly. Turn your brush so you don't get a repeat pattern. Just lightly. bit in here from the light of the glow of whatever it is in there. <laughs> I think this needs a little more brown in here. A little black.
So I'll wipe that off. So it's just a bunch of stippling, really. Just lightly adding color. So we want to dry that before we put any more on or we'll end up moving it all around. So heat gun. Try it, Candy. You can do it. I have faith in all of you guys. Just try it. It's fun. Get an old folder out. You don't have to worry about if it doesn't work out. <laughs> Matter of fact, you can just paint right back on top of it. Try it again. You want it good and um, dry? Now it's good and dry. Now, I think I'll try and put these arches in this. Looks like a hall of arches. So the trick to this is to get your um, Rossian or I have Cayenne and make these lines with a slight arch on the top. And they're not perfect lines, so you don't have to worry about that. And this fairy will go over top. So we have, you could use a rake for this. This, that would be a really good time to use that. Or you can use um, even a script, a short script. Or a flat, a, a small flat would work also. So I'm going to try this cayenne first. So it looks like with script, you have to hold it on the end and stand it on end. Don't put it on a slant. And then you just have faith. And I can always go over it with more black. And I can always take the, um, and wash it back a bit if I find it's too bright. Use some of that yellow. Go back up.
So just a suggestion of what it is. And I can take my sponge again and add more to it. So it's kind of like a back and forth thing you do. So let's see, a little bit more of that. So any of the ones that I covered, I can now add to. If I need to cover more, I can. There's no wrong way of doing sponging, really. I think I want it a little darker in there. Okay, now let's dry that again. And then we'll start putting in some of the fairies. Okay, so if you see, if you look at these fairies, they, the base color of them is kind of, um, it's an odd greenish, it's like a muddy green red color. So we can um, put in some of these muddy washes in, but I want them fairly blended because our main, um, strokes that will show that this is kind of see-through will be these bright white lines that we put in, the highlights. So we could do, um, being that this is the acrylic paint, just the cheap craft paint, it's got a tooth. So we could actually use a... Um, pastel pencil and that way we don't have to worry about erasing any graphite or whatever so i got some pastel pencils here let's see so I have this flesh color that should go on fairly nice. So this one here, actually I think I'll do a cayenne color on the top here. Um, let's see, she's about here, her head's there. And then her body, her arms comes out here. And she comes out with her wings out here. This one, um, I think we'll do the foreground one first. She's about there. She'll she'll be about here. She has this uh, crazy hair <laughs> and more of a child look to her face. Very small, petite. And it's like it's it's like she's on an angle. She's the way she's standing. There's 
very little definition of her her body. Just more or less just the arms are shown to be clear in fingers and stuff. But the rest of her is not. This one, she's more here looking up. It almost looks like she's kind of floating behind these girls. She's got some antennas. And then her wings go out there. Okay, they're holding flowers. And... She's, her face is about here. With her shoulders and arms going down. Just got a long flowy dress and wings. She's holding on to this bunch of flower pieces. And then she's got those huge antennae. See? Little face, but huge antennas. I'm not going to bother with these guys at the back here. Alright, so we'll have to paint these in now. And I want a fairly small brush to do this. around. So this is a number two. Any questions? Hi, Elaine. Hi, Devin. So she's again more into the buffs this one here her face kind of a buff with a bit of green in it i guess she could do a bit of the gray too it's very odd shades but as you can see they're they're getting a reflection from here so all the left sides of them are going to be highlighted So she'll have So you could use um, either water or gel medium or some kind of a glazing medium would work. Floating mediums also would work. Because you almost want to see a bit of the background through her. She has a bit of a forehead. And I can come back and highlight more if I want to. Hmm. She has that big hairdo. I think it's a hairdo. <laughs> so I'll just get this on and um, 
I'm not worried about the color of the pastel because I'm going to go over top of it again. I just want to get it all mapped in first. So you actually, if you're trying this, it might be a good idea to use a, a light blue. Would look really nice in the pastels mixed with this paint. It looks kind of cool. Just trying to get her thumb in here. hand. And this could be darker, but we'll go back in and make this darker. She has her little butt. And let's see, this one, she's fairly light. Just a coat. Just want a little bit of color in here, maybe a little bit of this gray. And I want to make the edges not too hard. Take a little bit of this green here because this one has a bit of hair. 
or whatever. Bring it down into the face a bit. Shadow. Let's try that hand a little bit. Let's see. Her thumb. And her finger. And then this one has, I think it needs to be darker in here. So I'm going to use some of this gray with a little bit of water in my brush. And I'm going to color in here. That needs a little darker. And Now I need some white. Smidge. So just a little bit of white with that gray. And I'm going to fill in the faces a little bit.
just to give it a little bit more color or lightness. And we'll go back in again to do the real highlights. Oh, I got to do her. I missed one. <laughs> All right. So this one here is more dark. So we're going to use this dark, dark color. This is the shadow from the light makes her look uh, like a, more like a silhouette. So we'll just use this black green that I have. It's mostly the hair that's showing as a silhouette. And her face just shows a little bit of her chin here. That's fairly dark. And then a little bit of this color for her arm. And then I think I'll go with this gray, warm gray again and, and color this part in. I can mix it a little bit, some other colors. And then a little more, I guess that's her hair, I don't know, but. We can use some markers on that later. I just want a little bit of fuzz look. <laughs> Let's see, 
goes into a little bit of, it's kind of blended in here. So you can see her face a little bit. Kind of hard to tell. I might have to put more white or amber around her face to have it show properly. Any questions so far? I'm just going to paint around her face and then I'll go back in with some more stippling so it looks a little more natural. You painting along, anybody? Let's see. My script brush for that.
Okay, Devin, no problem. Okay, let's try that. Now we want this good and dry because now I'm going to go in with some pastel to finish doing this. Okay. Now, I want I have a Conte here, that'd probably work. I want a white. So what I'm going to do is um, some white. See how scratchy it looks? That's what I would say would be done with charcoal or pan pastels or, or these. These are um, Karen Dosh. So she has a like a, I don't know what this is, <laughs> but it comes in around her. It's almost like a flower bud in a way because it meets, kind of closes. See how you same with their I think their wings, but
Now I'm going to take off this pastel that was left. From where I drew it. I'll have to go back over that. Maybe I'm going to try a pencil crayon, a colored pencil for this, see if it's darker. Yeah, I think it is a little bit nicer looking. It's more noticeable. You could go in with a bit of... Um, Markers, too, if you wanted to. It's kind of like her dress is flowing. Now, with the nice thing about using um, crayons or colored pencils is that the wax will resist if you want to go over areas with... Um, some more paint. I think I need paint in here. The crayon isn't working. So, let's see. Back to the white. Oop. Darn. black on it. antennas some dry brushing So I'm just looking at the brightest areas right now. Her thumb. And 
on her wrist. And this, I think, is part of her wing or something. Bright back here. She has these, um, I don't know what they are, little bells hanging, maybe? Her neck. And then this guy, oh,
this one is going to be a little tricky. Then there's these little dots. Could you zoom in? Yes. Sorry, guys. Better? Now, let's see. I think I'm going to try and do her face in colored pencil. You know, it's not exactly like theirs, but well. Just so I can see where everything is, then I can go back in with some of this or maybe some of the darker. These tiny, tiny faces are, it's more like a, su a suggestion <laughs> of anything, really.
something like that. Okay, so get some of this green, put the leaves in of this little whining thing. So tap. darker areas. All right. I think I need some more white in her head too. Where else? Okay, let's do this one. Just a bit of light marks here and there. More or less just to show where the edges of the wings are. her funny hair up a little bit. bit of dry brushing. And then her arm there I want to fix up a little bit. this color and a little bit of that.
Okay, just checking. See what else I can do here. Okay, I think I need a few more highlights around the tree area. So, let's see. You the green. And that was up in here. And maybe a couple here. Around the She needs a little bit more defining this one here, her wings. to do her antlers or <laughs> whatever they're called. Let's see. Maybe a pencil for this on the gray side. Mm. There's a purpley gray.
and it needs to be a little darker there. Actually. All right, so far. So it's very suggestive. <laughs> Let's do a little bit more on her arms here. Might need white paint. Smidgen down here. And right here. There. So far. So I think they look fairly fairy like. <laughs> and then I think I'm gonna put something more, I don't know, a border of some sort instead. So we could put something from here on these papers. 
a touch of magic, something like that, or or stamps. I could do stamps too. That's cute. A little. I could use this actually. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, something like this. So I could use about inch and a half roughly. Maybe a little shorter, smidgen shorter. So I could center this here. That'll just fit. Yeah, that'll work. I think I'll glue it. Some matte medium. So this is what I like about mixed media is when you use all kinds of stuff in your paintings. And usually it's not just to use something different. It's because whatever I'm going to use it for, it will give it, a, give it its effect or it's easier to draw with. It's, I use it for convenience, really. To whatever makes it easier to get down what I'm trying to 
put across as a texture or This is fairly heavy um, scrapbook paper, so that's why I'm doing both sides. Try and get it centered. Just cut those off and we're done. that looks pretty good. I'll bring you out a little bit. You can see it all. Yeah, it kind of gives it that old time look. using other people's, um, the old masters or whoever online that has old paintings and, and try and do them yourself. Look at them, study them, and think about what layer would go on first, what colors would go on first. You may have to do it a few times, but it's fun. <laughs> I like doing it. I so hope, hope somebody tried with me to see if they could give it a go. Um, you can check online and find his work. He's got some really neat uh, different types of... So I had a little bit more pen to this hair. So that gave it kind of a more of a <laughs> wacky looking hair. And then um, this shows a little bit more now i could go back in this and glaze it more on to a yellow side because this is more of a yellow glow that would be coming from here like you could go really crazy and start shading areas in here depends how much you want to how much detail do you want in it thanks doc so I hope you're doing your folders and um, trying different stuff. That's why I made my folder was to experiment in, kind of like a journal. But the folders are easy to use because you can just lay them out on your table instead of a whole book. And then um, you can 
if they don't turn out, you can just pitch it if you want. Doesn't matter. Yeah. And then I like this guy. <laughs> I like the I like the wings. Oh, they're printed. So give it a go and um, post it. Tag me wherever you're posting it because I'd love to see it. And next week is I'll be showing this one. This will be August. So I haven't done anything but this painting here. So we'll do August next next week. So you, everyone, uh, stay creative. Have a good uh, weekend if I don't see you. And uh, get creative because it really helps you relieve stress in these stressful days we're living. Thanks for coming, everyone. We'll talk to you later. Bye.